Well, with the creator of the universe as our pilot, we can sail into those uncharted waters with no fear. <clears throat> Reading from 1 Timothy chapter 3, beginning with verse 1, this is a true saying, if a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous, one that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride he fall into condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into re reproach and a snare of the devil. Likewise, must a deacon be grave, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy of filthy lucre, holding the mystery of faith in a pure conscience. The Lord bless his reading. I'm going to read from Titus, the third chapter. I put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, Deceived, serving divers' lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior toward man, appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to us mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost which he shed upon us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things will I will that thou affirm constantly that they will have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. I'm reading from Second Timothy chapter four. I charge thee Therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. <clears throat> For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but after their own lusts shall they heap unto them to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, <clears throat> do the work <clears throat> of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them that love is appearing.
bringing to you a report from the Board of Elders, we recommend that on this June the 27th, 2004, that Reverend Terry Lee Brown be ordained. Do I hear a motion to accept this report? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion's passed and carried. Brother Brown, I hope that you don't think being an elder is going to be something that's going to make you look mean and rough, like all of us fellows up here tonight. <clears throat> My wife often, when I'm on the platform, will look at me and she'll go, smile. What she doesn't know is that I have a lot on my mind about that time. In fact, there's times when we're singing that I get on the wrong verse and everybody just makes fun of me. But the reason is I've got other things on my mind. You say, well, you ought to come to church. I do. That's the reason I have other things on my mind. But it certainly is an honor, Brother Brown, to be part of this service this evening. And I thought it was very appropriate that Brother and Sister Crick would sing. And in a few moments, the Campbells will sing. Because if it were not for the Campbells, the Browns wouldn't be here. And you've been friends of theirs and friends of the Crick family for a number of years. And so uh, we appreciate that very, very much. And it's certainly an honor to be part of this service and be able to bring the message tonight. Brother Brown, in a few minutes, you will place your hands upon your Bible at the scripture that Brother Grove just read. I want to look at that portion of Scripture and give you a charge tonight as you enter into the ministry as being an ordained elder. Now, Brother Brown has a lot of number of years. He should have been ordained years ago. And I was thinking, uh, how proud your father would be tonight. <clears throat> he loved you and he was interested in your ministry. And um, I believe tonight in heaven he's looking down with a smile upon his face, rejoicing for this great moment in your life. Brother Brown has served a number of years on the mission field. And as you all know, they're going to be moving now to Hope Sound. Trusting that he'll be able to get back into the ministry as far as missions or some part of the ministry. And just felt like that it would be best if we could ordain him tonight and uh, help in this area of his ministry. Now Paul charges Timothy to do several things as a faithful minister here in 2 Timothy chapter 4. And this is my charge to you also. Always preach God's word. Always be ready. Carry the message. Understand hardships will come in service to God. Paul spoke these words to Timothy as his death was approaching. He said, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they, when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of the evangelists, and make full proof of the ministry. Now we will notice here that Paul's first admonition was, Preach the word of God. This is mine to you. Always preach God's word. The Greek term means exactly that. Preach the word. Don't just talk about it. Preach the word. Take God's word and thoroughly proclaim it and its message. Never depend upon your own strength or understanding, but allow the Holy Spirit to speak the word through you. Preach the word. You and I know that we have heard preachers before that preached, but it wasn't the Word. It was their idea or something they'd read somewhere, and that may be all right in its kind, but God wants us to make sure we're preaching the Word, His truth, God's truth. 
Be instant, it says, is the next admonition. But understand what being instant means. Paul says to be instant in season and out of season. To be instant according to vines means to stand by, be at hand, come on or upon. Take a stand with God's word. Whether the truth is received in season or rejected out of season, hold fast the truth as led by the Holy Spirit. Preach the truth at any time, wherever it be popular or not. Preach the word, not about the word. Don't just talk about the word. Preach the word. Now, I'm sure that all of these ministers behind me would tell you there have been times when we ourselves got in the flesh and we would preach. We were honest. We were sincere. We would preach things that we thought was just what the people needed. But that wasn't what they needed. They needed the word. And God wants you to make the Word come alive and afresh unto each and every heart. Just talk about the Word. Be instant in season. Next, Paul charges Timothy, as I charge you, to reprove and rebuke. Preach the Word with conviction. Reprove, or so that it will convict. Rebuke. Step on a few toes when it's necessary. Allow the Holy Spirit to use you as a mouthpiece. Amen. I'll tell you if there's ever, you know, we, we all, it seems to me as though today we have a social gospel. Rather than preaching what God's word has to say, well, you say, but preacher, people won't be interested in what God has to say. I'm afraid that we're missing it. People are interested in what God has to say more than what we have to say. And even if we must step on some toes, we need to rebuke. We need to reprove. We need to let people know exactly where they are in their life. I remember a few months ago, a family came to me and they were telling me about the church they were going to and said, Preacher, there used to be a time that every once in a while the preacher would just get up and preach a message and ask us where we really are. But said, now it's not that way. Well... We need to preach the word and preach it as God would be pleased with. Rebuke. Don't fail to let God's word bring conviction of sin. Don't fail to tell exactly what sin is. Then Paul charges Timothy, and this charges to you also, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Call them near to comfort them after the reproving and the rebuking. With great patience and utilizing the Word of God. Use loving patience as you minister to God's people. Teach them God's Word from your experience. You know, I've found, Brother Brown, that if a person can preach a message with tenderness and love, it will not fall on deaf ears. But it will fall upon the ears of people that, that love the truth if they're loved while the truth is being preached. I want to tell you there is a difference between, between being a preacher and a pastor. If I would have my choice, I'd rather be a pastor any time than be a preacher. You say, what do you mean? Well, a preacher is one that can get up and with flowery words can preach a wonderful message. But a pastor is one that does out of, out of a heart of love. And I want to say, church, if anything Brother Terry has, he has a heart of love. He's a very compassionate person, willing to listen, willing to stop, willing to pay attention, willing to reach out to those that are in need. And, and that's exactly what we need in this day is men that love people, love and have a compassion. Long suffering. <laughs> Suffer long. And I want to tell you something. There's times when you will. There will be times when your heart will break. In fact, there will be some times in the ministry when you feel that you can't take any more. But God's always there to pour out His grace and His love to you and help you be long-suffering. Secondly, never let the turning away from the truth by people affect your teaching. Paul says... That sometimes they will no longer endure sound doctrine. They will even turn away from it. But you and I know, as these men that are seated behind me here to ordain you, 
We must be the ones that are willing to stay the course. We all must keep the faith and preach the truth, never turning to fables. We must be willing even in the midst of adverse circumstances. And when it seems as though all is against us, we must still stand for the truth. And I have confidence, Brother Brown, that you're certainly a man that will be willing to stand for the truth. Uh, Timothy, Paul exhorts Timothy here to stand for the truth. But Paul says you must also stay alert. Be sober, watching for Satan and his attacks. For he will attack you and this church and any ministry that is faithful to God. But he said, suffer, endure through evil affliction. Learn to roll with the attacks of, uh, that God allows that he might bring the victory. There will be some hardships. Attacks on you and your wife and your home and all these things can be under attack. But you must preserve, persevere in all and keep on serving God. The word says, woe unto that man that all men speak well of him. And there will be times that you'll have to stand for right and righteousness. Even if you must stand alone. God wants you to stand for that which is right. And against that which is wrong. Paul charges Timothy to do the work of an evangelist. The work of an evangelist means to keep on proclaiming the good news. To keep preaching to the people through thick and through thin. Proclaim God's word wherever you may go. Never get discouraged and never give up the ship. Well, you have a lot of experiences that you can tell people about. Our church now for... The last 10 years or more, Brother Brown has been in charge of our missions, our mission superintendent, and I, I have never seen him lost for words to tell you about an experience that he's had on the mission field. I remember, Brother Brown, when you moved to town over that little humble house over there, and those girls were quite young, and, and uh, I remember you going over and putting your application in at SIA, and they looked at that and said, a missionary? What's a missionary? What can a missionary do? You remember that? Well, what they didn't know was here as a man, if you're a missionary, you have to learn to be able to do everything. I mean everything. Like, you know, putting the, the uh, wire on the airplane, that bailing wire on the airplane. Or something to fly those missionaries. Brother, Brother uh, Wingham told me when he got home from the mission field, you know, he was an airplane pilot. He told me, he said, I don't care if I never fly again. He said, after flying all of those, those rickety airplanes and all that was involved, he said, I'm scared to death to fly anymore. Well, Brother Brown has had a lot of experience. And because of those experiences, Brother Brown has been able to witness to people that you and I would never, ever be able to witness to. And so keep up the good work. Don't get discouraged. Never give up the ship. You've always taken an opportunity where you are to be a witness. Continue to do that. And finally, Paul said, make full proof of your ministry. Bring your, grit, your gift to its full measure or potential. Carry out your service to the fullest. With all that you are and with all that the Spirit of God gives you, keep on serving. That is what Paul's charge is to Timothy. And that is my charge to you today. Will you accept this charge? Will you allow Christ to be your all? Will you let the Holy Spirit guide and direct all that you say and do in your ministry? That, my brother, is what God expects. And that is what He calls, why He calls us ministers and believers to do. Accept the charge. Carry out the full potential of your ministry. Brother Brown, we do not know where God will lead and where you will minister, but we know that God has a full plan for your life. And we pray that God will continue to bless you wherever you are and wherever the field He has for you. We believe in you and ask God's blessing upon you. God bless you.
All right, let's get our hymnal intended number 54. I want to ask you if you would to stand with us, please, as we sing this song. Number 54. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him. For they know his voice. And a stranger they will not follow, but will flee from him. For they know not the voice of strangers. This parable Jesus spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. And all that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not, but for, the, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling, and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth, because he is a hireling, and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Reading from the book of Ephesians, chapter 4. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you, that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, 
one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But unto, but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, under the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But, speaking the truth in love, may grow up into Him in all things which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Continue reading from Matthew chapter 9, verse 36. And when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them, because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth labors unto his harvest.
This is a charge to a newly ordained minister. The Apostle Paul, who had much to say to young ministers, used a significant, a significant expression. Remember Jesus Christ, 2 Timothy 2.8. May you ever remember him who you have confessed as your Lord and Savior and who has called you to himself and now send you forth to be a minister. Remember, you belong to him. You are not your own. You have been bought with a price. Remember Jesus and his words. Let them, let him, let them dwell in your heart that you may discover that therefore make your ministry an offering to him truly. He has the words of eternal life and that his words not only have power to transform your life, but the lives of your hearers. Remember Jesus who came to seek and to save that which was lost, and to give his life a ransom for many. Making redemption, growth, a person, uh, first objective in your ministry. Remember Jesus who went about doing good, who came to minister not to be ministered unto. There is much good to be done in your lifetime if you're willing to pay the price without being concerned over who gets the credit. Remember Jesus, who went to the cross in complete surrender to God, to God's will, and to many, many times said, He who would come after me, let him deny himself, Take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever saveth his life shall lose it. But he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. There is no disciple, a disciple without a cross and, a, right. and no Christian ministry. Remember Jesus who had perfect faith in man even though he knew what was in man. He always looked upon people in terms of possibility. Remember Jesus who loved people, all kinds of people. He loved them because they were the children of his Father. He came not to condemn them, but to love them. Therefore, before you can effectively preach the gospel of Christ, you must have faith in people and love them devotedly. Remember Jesus, who had perfect faith in God as expressed through the, dis the discipline of prayer and the study of the Bible. Your effectiveness will depend upon the way you draw from these divine resources. Remember Jesus, who loved the church and gave him self for it. It was he who said, I will build my church. Make sure that the church belongs to him and is dedicated to carrying out of his purpose and will. The church is the living, visible body of Christ in the world today. Apart from this, the church has no right to exist, nothing to preach. It is merely a cumbering the ground. Remember, Jesus meets the need of every human heart. Therefore, bring the heart of man to uh, the heart of Christ. Remember Jesus, and you will fulfill the purpose of your calling as a minister. Brother and Sister Brown, we're going to ask you to come to the center of the pulpit here as we ask you some questions. You're a nice-looking young couple. Amen. Is it your sincere conviction that you've been called of God to the ministry? That is my sincere conviction. Are you persuaded that the Holy Scripture contains all doctrine required of necessity for eternal salvation through faith in Jesus Christ? Are you determined out of the said Scriptures to instruct the people committed to your charge and to teach nothing as required of necessity to salvation but that which you shall be persuaded may be concluded and proved by the scriptures. 
I am so persuaded and have so determined by God's grace. You cordially accept the Articles of Faith of the Frankfurt Bible Holiness Church and agree to declare and defend them. I do in the fear of God. Will you then give your faithful diligence also to minister the doctrines and sacraments and disciplines of Christ as the Lord hath commanded? I will do so by the help of the Lord. Will you be diligent in prayers and in reading the Holy Scriptures and such studies as help to a knowledge of the same? I will do so, the Lord being my helper. Will you be diligent to frame and fashion yourself and your family according to the doctrine of Christ and to make yourself and them as much as in you lieth wholesome examples and patterns of the flock of Christ? I shall apply myself thereto, the Lord being my helper. Will you maintain and set forth as much as lieth in you, quietness, peace, and love among all Christian people, and especially among those who, who are or may be committed to your charge? I will do so, the Lord being my helper. Will you here now pledge yourself to be loyal and obedient to the duty elected and consecrated officers of the church? Okay, we're going to ask you and your wife to kneel at the altar. You elders to come. You elders' wives can come and lay your hands on, on Sister Brown. Brother Brown has had surgery on both of his arms in the last two weeks. So when we extend to him the right hand of fellowship, it's going to have to be all of him. Congregation, please stand. Our Heavenly Father, we come tonight with thanksgiving. Yes. We thank you, Lord, for the life of Brother Terry Brown. We've always enjoyed his testimony of how that you saved him as a young man and how that you led him to Hope Sound Bible College and how that you brought he and Marjorie together, Lord, and they started their family, started serving you, Lord, in the work of the Master. We rejoice tonight in all the many blessings that you have bestowed upon him, Lord. How faithful that you have been, and we thank you and we honor you for it, Jesus. And Lord, as elders tonight, we come and we lay our hands yes, upon yes, him to, yes, uh, to ordain him, Lord, yes, asking, O Jesus, God, that God. thou would some way protect him, Jesus. Uh, thou would build a hedge around him, that thou would supply his every need, that thou would lead him and guide him and direct him, Lord, and make him a powerhouse for God. Wherever you choose to send him, Lord, that his witness and his light for you will be that which will shine forth as the sun, as thou would be pleased with, Lord. There will be such a radiance about his ministry, Lord, that hungry people will come to know you in a very personal way. We pray for his wife. We thank you for Sister Margie, Lord. How faithful that she's been to you and how faithful that she's been to her husband. And we would ask a special blessing now upon her, Lord, as they go and face a new role, Lord, and a new opportunity, Jesus, that thou would give her wisdom and give her leadership and give her godly counsel that she can help Brother Terry as they minister for you, for the honor and for the glory of God. We believe you to do it, Jesus. We believe that you have a bright and wonderful and blessed future for them, Jesus. And we would ask that you would just guide them and direct them and lead them according to thy will. We believe you to do it, Jesus, in your name. Brother Brown, take thy authority to preach the word of God, to administer the sacraments, and to perform all the duties of an ordained minister in the church of God. In the name of the Father, and of God the Son, and of God the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. That you might rise at this time.
Brother Brown, before I give to you this certificate of ordination, I must ask you this question. If at any time that you feel that you're out of harmony with the manual of the Frankfurt Bible Holiness Church, will you voluntarily your credentials? Yes. God bless you. We appreciate you. We believe in you. And we're going to miss you. But we know God has some great things in store for you. thought of the importance, and that's kind of stuck with me over the years, the importance of having someone that I really care about that reaches beyond the boundaries of blood ties and my own personal children, but to others. And I trust God would continue to help me to have that desire and passion for others that they would come to know him. Jesus saves and he sanctifies my heart, and I am truly a very privileged and a blessed man and I realize, had I not given my life to Jesus, the story would be a whole lot different. But Jesus made such a wonderful change in my life, and I'm so thankful for it. My purpose and desire is to point others to him and to be an example of Jesus Christ and his love and his holiness. And an example that would lead others not astray, but would lead them into the fold of Jesus Christ. Thank you. All right, let us all stand. Sister Marjorie, if you would come back up.
20? I was downstairs in the Spanish classroom and I brought the communique down and so I turned to the 